Here's another iteration on the Zero Terminal projects I've been working on for a few years. For those of you who haven't seen them, I've been trying to design the most usable all-in-one Pi Zero computer out there. This version departs a little from the previous ones, as it's more focused on modularity and foregoes a keyboard as standard, though it is possible to add one, as I'll show you in a little bit. The goal here was to create something very versatile, allowing for all sorts of use cases to unlock the Zero's potential. Anyways, let's take a look at it. The first thing you'll notice is that the device looks a little like a fat smartphone. That's because the entire thing is basically designed around the Waveshare AMOLED 5.5 inch 1080p touchscreen. This thing was originally designed for the Raspberry Pis 3 and 4 but I created a bunch of custom adapters to let you hook up a Pi Zero instead, more about that in a minute. Around the outside you'll see various ports and buttons including a full size USB 2.0 port, micro SD socket for the operating system, micro USB for charging and a power switch. On the side there is a headphone jack and three programmable buttons hooked up to the Zero's GPIO pins. You could set up all sorts of functions for these like rotating the screen, volume up or down or launching other custom scripts and applications with a single press. On the top end is another button which turns the display off and on, helping stretch out the 1200mAh LiPo battery life and also a grill hiding a little speaker behind it. The back of the device is where all the potential lies. This includes two 40 pin sockets which connect to both GPIO pins, video out, camera connector, two USB ports, power indicators and more. The idea is to allow people to create and add custom backpacks to change the functionality depending on the needs. In order to connect the Zero to the display in the smallest possible space, I created a main PCB and a few smaller adapter PCBs. The Zero itself is screwed onto the board and soldered directly to it via the GPIO pins. This main board contains a USB hub, power circuit, audio amp, speaker, buttons, headphone jack and even a vibration motor for custom notifications. There's a micro SD card board plugged into the Zero which extends the card socket and also doubles as a frame for the other ports at the bottom of the device. The Waveshare display already has some mounting screws so securing the main board is easy. There's a little header section to connect the display to the main board and you simply screw everything together. I included six threaded inserts onto this board to make attaching different cases simple too. The Zero only has one USB port as standard so I designed a little USB hub circuit on the main board using the simple FE1.1S chip. This splits the USB port into four separate streams and is good enough for lower consumption stuff like mice and keyboards as well as the display's touchscreen capability. You probably need to hook up an external 5 volt line for more power hungry peripherals. I'm particularly pleased with the HDMI adapter which connects the full sized HDMI port on the display to the mini HDMI port on the Zero. I was racking my brains for a long time on how to connect these in the smallest possible way and it turns out using two thin PCBs sandwiched together allows this since you can solder to both the HDMI A plug component which takes 1.6mm PCBs and the smaller mini HDMI plug which only takes up to 1mm boards. The power section is something I had trouble with. It's based on the PowerBoost 1000C design and was supposed to fit directly onto the main board but a couple of the small ICs were too fiddly for me to hand solder and I damaged them before making this video. I would have just included the PowerBoost board itself but unfortunately there's not enough room. Instead I used a cheap generic charge boost board which is fine for this prototype but doesn't have all the extra features such as low battery indicators and a better power switch circuit. That'll be for the next iteration. The Zero doesn't come with audio as standard, but thankfully the Waveshare display does have a built-in headphone jack for audio through HDMI, so I wondered if I added an audio amp circuit to the pins of the headphone jack, whether it would power a small speaker, and yes it works. Unfortunately not very well though, but it's good enough for stuff like bleeps and bloops on notification sounds. Audio through the headphones sounds great though, and I added my own jack in there so it's accessible from outside the case. This particular jack has a mechanical switch which defaults to the speakers and automatically switches to headphones whenever a 3.5mm plug is inserted. As I previously mentioned, I think the backpack feature of this is where you really see the potential of the device. I can imagine all sorts of different backpacks that could transform the functionality of this. Things like radio transceivers, extra network interfaces, game controllers, TV tuners, solar panels and simple stands are all easily doable. 
The cool thing is that since it's modular, you can swap these on the fly to change the functionality. So say you could change between a keyboard and radio transceiver combo for a packet radio messenger, then replace that with a different operating system on the micro SD card and add a game controller to turn it into a portable emulator. The first prototype backpack I've created is a slide out keyboard. When you combine that with the i3 window manager, you have quite a productive handheld Linux machine. Even though the Zero isn't the most powerful computer, you can still get a lot done through the terminal since it uses up a fraction of the resources that a GUI does. The design is based on the great Mini Pi QWERTY keyboard by Bob Ricius on Hackaday and uses the SAMD21 chip to turn it into a USB input device. It's made using three PCB layers, firstly the bottom which contains the electronic components and keys, then a cover PCB which displays the key labels, then another board which connects all that to the terminal. The slide mechanism is made up of 3D printed supports and tiny screws, and while it does slide it needs a little extra work to make it more robust. The bottom layer connects to the top using little spring loaded pins. I've also added a couple of LEDs you can toggle on and off when you're in low light. The final thing is surprisingly thin at only a few millimetres deep. Unfortunately, although I think it looks good, I haven't got it working properly yet. I've talked to Bob about the design and I think it's solid. The problem appears to be with the chip program I'm using to get the firmware onto it. It's one of the cheap ones and seems to be giving me false verification messages. Anyways, you get the idea of how this could make the Zero Terminal a pretty handy little device. I also created another custom mini keyboard stand, this time using a salvage Scion 5MX keyboard, which is still probably one of the best small keyboards ever designed. I used a pre-made Scion keyboard to USB adapter you can find on Tindy, and the thing is open source so you can make your own too. It won't be much of a stretch to go even further to develop a full adapter case which will turn it into a palm top computer with working hinge and maybe a bigger secondary battery and USB hub. I've registered zeroterminal.org which is currently redirecting to the project page on the node site. Over the next year as I update the design I want to make a website to help build up the platform showing people exactly how to make these and showcasing all the backpacks and custom apps other users create. In the meantime, I want to redo the main PCB, change up some of the components like the rubbish speaker, redesign the power circuit, etc. Maybe even experiment with using the Raspberry Pi compute module instead. Long term, it would be amazing to design a custom display board, then the entire device could be shrunken further, closer to smartphone size. Anyways, I hope you found this interesting. I know I have a lot to learn about all this kind of stuff, so any advice from experts is welcome. Please share this video around if you think others will like it. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video. This project first appeared in Node Volume 2, a new independent 180 page zine packed with all sorts of open hardware and decentralized software projects. Pick up a hard copy or download for free from the Node site.